Hi guys, I'm doing a video on my first aid supplies, emergency first aid supplies, that sort of thing. So, um, I have various different components. Now, I've just recently organized this so that um, I've gone through what I had what, and realized what I didn't have. Um, I've stocked up and then I've tried to organize it into some system. I will say this. Um, I am looking for a better system so um, I understand this is not ideal having them I actually have them, everything in tubs at the moment and I'd, I mean it's I think it's good to have some things in tubs perhaps but all up I think um, I'd like to come up with a bit of a better system I'd, I'd like to have a really good um, emergency first aid bag it'd have to be quite big to have a lot of stuff um, but I'm also a firm believer in, you know, a big rule when you're stocking any first aid kit is don't overstock. So this is basically all my supplies. My first aid kit in my car is has a bit of everything, but it's not overstocked. It has a little bit of everything. If I have to use something, I will restock it from this. So my actual, you know, out there on the road first aid kit um, everything is very easily accessible because it's all in the one spot and I don't have too much of everything clogging up my view of what is there. That's a really important thing. You need to be able to access things really quickly. So this is basically just <laughs> my storing everything that I have. Uh, now I've got three big tubs here and then I've got uh, separate, I've got a medicine medicines in a different tub. I'm going to start with this one. Um, this is basically, excuse, there's a siren in the background. Um, this is where I'm keeping uh, topical ointments. I'm keeping non-sterile bits and pieces and um, just basically just random things in this one is the best way I could pro probably put it. Um, again, I might, you know, change things up where I put things, but I'm just going to go through what I do have. Now, this is not, I mean, this might seem really extensive for some people and for other people, it may seem like just, you know, the tip of the iceberg as far as being prepared for, um, um, first aid emergencies and, and illness and that sort of thing. Um, you know, I'm a bit middle of the road about it all. We're, we're a very healthy family. I have had incidents where I've had to dress a wound really well that has then needed stitching. I've had to take, you know, children <laughs> to go get stitches, all that sort of thing. So I think it's important to have a good array of, you know, things and, you know, sterile things as well. Um, for deep wounds and then just general everyday things that are going to get you through as well as that you have to consider your lifestyle we love going on bush walks we've got almost 11 people in our family so you know it's really important that um we not only prepare ourselves when we do things like that but that we have enough supplies so <laughs> if four kids get a graze we've got band band-aids for all of them you know what i mean this is just my personal stock um, and you should not take my word for any of it. Um, I'm just sharing, you know, what I enjoy having. Um, this is not my professional uh, professional kit or anything like this. This is my at home. This is my mum kit, all right? And this is just me being a mum um, and nesting somewhat crazily as well. <laughs> so let's get started. Alright, I have jelly beans and I want to get more of these. Um, the reason they're open is actually because um, Layla had a few the other day when she needed some, she had like, um, I don't know, she touched something in the garden. She had these tiny little funny, tiny little like um, threads of something stuck in her skin. Anyway, I had to remove it. So that was basically, you know, sugar is a painkiller and that was she had some of that but basically I like the idea of having um, glucose jelly beans something like that for um, you know people who might have diabetes or just low blood sugar or just be starving <laughs> or something when you're on when you're anywhere it's just really good because you know even though we don't have diabetes or anything in our family 
in a first aid kit if you've got it with you you might you never know when you'll come across someone who might need some something okay and along the same lines a bit different though I've got these wonderful things these were recommended they're electrolyte tablets and I think it's a pack of 12 yep and um, you pop them in like a 500 600 ml bottle of water and they do the job they don't have added sugar which is excellent they also don't have um, artificial sweeteners which is even better in my opinion um, so they're good for anyone who might be dehydrated to get that back up um, so these are the sort of things that if we were going bushwalking or whatever or camping I would take these as well as whatever I've already got in my car some things I don't actually want to keep in the car constantly because I think jelly beans might melt for instance you know you don't know some days are really hot at the moment because it's summer here okay now these sorts of things are really handy just non-sterile makeup remover pads cotton tips they're just really really handy if you have a really superficial little grays they're great to chuck some betadine on or whatever to clean it up quickly get a band-aid on and you're done they're out the door again sort of thing and I've just got a little bit of betadine left I'm not actually getting this anymore I find that it always leaks no matter what and it's very expensive so it's a big waste so I've started getting um, little little sachets of stuff and I'll show you that soon um, vomit bags <laughs> I'm hoping we never have to use these um, hand sanitizer I have this that's sterile inside that's just a medicine cup for giving children liquid medicines okay what else do I have here that's just some paw paw ointment for whatever you can use that as nappy rash cream as you know it's good for eczema and um, all that sort of thing um warty because I had to treat a child's wart it worked um uh antibacterial wipes um a drop cloth because I love drop cloths you never know when that's going to come in handy and I don't even know what I've got in here let's have a look I've got a bulb syringe because when fingernails break it can be painful good to have fingernails stuck in your first aid kit oh and there I have a couple of dental flosses to go along with the toothbrushes and toothpaste okay then I have a whole heap of topical ointments this is my personal stash you will have whatever you feel is necessary I'm not corporal ointment that is sunscreen that's just some Vicks um, and then in here oh I've got more hats hand sanitizer I've got some tea tree stuff I've got more tea tree stuff here and then just things that we've actually used uh, that's a first aid spray so just an antiseptic okay we don't have you can't get over-the-counter antibiotic spray or creams in Australia and I think it's a good thing people putting antibiotic creams <laughs> you're causing antibiotic resistance unless you really really need them so you know it's fine to have something like that but don't use it whenever you get a graze that's not good um, uh, hydrocortisone this is like my thermal regulation pack <laughs> where I just have a few bits and pieces I have a heat pack in there I need to get some more of those like little hand sized ones or something and then I have a few a couple of different size instant cold packs there yeah, and back here I've got a bigger one I don't know if you can see all this guys sorry and I've just got an emergency blanket and I've got these little things that are you know they're supposed to help cool a fever or soothe a fever I should say you know and then this stuff instant cooling spray for sprains and strains good for sore backs and all that sort of stuff I've never used it it just seemed really awesome and I thought it'd be good to try so I've got that recently this box has again non-sterile things so but it's got non-sterile dressings and it's got some assessment tools uh, I've got a really crappy stethoscope uh, I had a really good one and then an, I lost an earpiece and they weren't producing the same exact same models anymore and I couldn't get the same earpiece and I kept it for ages until I thought no you know I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this I'm gonna get rid of it so I did so I'll get another good one but in the meantime I've got a really crappy cheap 
um, stethoscope. I've got a pair of um, scissors, like trauma shears, whatever. <laughs> they are technically sterile. I didn't order them sterile, I just ordered them for the scissors themselves. So it says single use, but once I've opened those, I'm keeping them. They're just for cutting bandages and things. Okay, um, a good set of tweezers. I haven't opened that yet because I just purchased them yesterday, I believe it was. Um, because the ones I had in my pack were so bad when I had to get little splintery things out of my daughter's wound. Um, I had to resort to my good, you know, eyebrow tweezers. <laughs> so I've purchased a good set just for this. Um, a Sphygmo manometer. A blood pressure cup. <laughs> Another specimen jar. Um, what's that? That is a sling or triangular bandage, whatever you want to call it. I've got more hand sanitizer because I've just got it in everywhere. Because <laughs> you want to have clean hands if you're treating someone. So if you can't wash them, that's good. Um, I uh, ideally like to just get some alcohol hand wash. Um, it's more expensive though, but I will get some eventually. And I also just yesterday picked these up. Some safety pins, very important to have. I've got a little tiny first aid guide, just that, you know, to have in here. That's always handy, isn't it? And, um, yeah, so then I've got the little things for, um, it's a good thermometer. It's missing the back, though. And I have to chuck some batteries in here as well. I have seen the back around. I just don't know where it is, but anyway. Um, I have band-aids of various types and some of these. These are all like oh the actual band-aid brown ones are sterile oh these ones are sterile as well i don't know about these though don't know about those ones doesn't say they're sterile so i'm not going to assume they are i've got tape a few different types of tape i love tape oh, this is my favorite it just rips beautifully sticks beautifully i can't think of what it's called this second <laughs> Uh, these are non-sterile gauze, so again, just for cleaning a really superficial wound, nice and handy to have. Um, gloves, lots of pairs of gloves in there, non-sterile. I've got some extra baggies that I've plonked in these things as well. They are antibacterial wipes here, some random things. Oh, I've got my old little watch in there, but that needs a new battery. I've got a pin light. Uh, tweezers and a whistle just random things that is empty I'm ready for something to go in it this is my protective gear for the person treating so this is not for someone who has hurt themselves this is for the person treating it so I have a little apron I have goggles you don't want to get blood or body fluids in your eyes I have more non-sterile gloves and I have a little mask these masks will do absolutely nothing to keep you or other people safe from illness but they are good just to pop over so you don't get blood or body fluid splatter in your mouth sometimes I see people walking around outside with these masks on I think dudes you have no idea they're not gonna do anything um, I think they work for about Oh, it's a few minutes before they stop protecting against viruses in the air. And then I have a whole bag of various different bandages. Whole different, whole different types. Include, this is the scary one. That's the snake bite bandage. And I hope I never, ever, ever have to use that. I hate snakes so much. But, you know, we live in Australia. We love to go and walk in nature. I have almost stepped on a snake. <laughs> so it is important to have. And certainly that's something I chuck in the car one. Uh, I've just got it in here at the moment. Oh, and this stuff is good too. That sticks on itself. So that's really good, especially if you don't have safety pins or whatever. You can put that over a main bandage. It actually sticks to itself. It's good stuff. What's it called? It's called... Just a cohesive bandage. <laughs> All right. 
Okay guys, I've moved my camera because it was the battery was on one bar and I don't want it to run out while I'm almost done. So this, should I show you, I don't know that I should show you my medicines, the sorts of medicines that I'm carrying. I've got prescription-y things, um, since you have to at least get the pharmacist permission. <laughs> um, so I've got that in one thing and then in this one I've just got regular stuff. Now um, gastro stop is not something we've ever used in this house. Um, if you get gastro you shouldn't take this unless you're deathly dehydrated because it's best to let the bug get through you um, and you'll get better a lot sooner as long as you can stay hydrated so this is if you know you suffering major dehydration only and so I've just got one small thing of it just in case I hope we never have to use it um, then you know a lot asthma medication um, and then various kids and adult pain relievers um, teething gel and more just regular painkillers, pain different age gr groups as well. Like my, some uh, my one of my older kids prefers to take the um, soluble um, Panadol, for instance, and they are just betadine lozenges that my husband got when he had a throat thing a couple of months back. So it's just we don't have an extensive amount of medicines because uh, we don't really take much <laughs> and I've got stuff that we would need um, analgesics is mainly what I've got um, I've got the heavier sort of more codeine ones in the other one okay this is my sterile kit now this is going to be far more extensive than a lot of people would have at home um, but yeah it might not be as extensive as some other people's. I have a whole, well, not a whole heap, but I have syringes in different sizes. 10 mil, 3 mil, I think, yep. And I have a whole heap of 1 mil syringes. The reason I have a whole heap of 1 mil syringes, these are fabulous for collecting colostrum if you're going to have a baby and want to. Um, so yeah, they're handy to have. I do have a few needles um, and drawing up needles and stuff. I don't have any medications to go with that um, and it's only a very small supply. Um, then I've got, what have I got? I've got dressing forceps, they're sterile and then also some sterile scissors. Um, just in case I should need them with this sort of thing. Um, I may not, but it's nice to have quick sterile scissors and stuff that you can get to. In here, I've got alcohol cleaning wipes. Alcohol cleaning wipes, yes, they're good for cleaning wounds, but I would argue they're absolutely not ideal. Alcohol stings like all hell. Um, so I have alcohol wipes for, you know, you can clean your hands with these. But you can also um, clean instruments if you really have to. Um, and then for, for the actual wounds, I prefer some iodine swabs. Okay, these don't hurt. That doesn't sting, but it's really, really good at cleaning. If you're going to use something like that. Um, and then in here I have, these are fantastic, I've got these in my car kit as well. They're just splinter probes, they <laughs> so come in handy, really good at getting splinters out. Um, I have a suture cutter there and I've got just a very small amount of suture material. Um, I've got, so that's just my little suture baggie um, where I have a packet of the sterile sterile suture kit and then sterile gloves and then I've literally only got one packet of sutures. 
I have sterile. These are fabulous. These are great for kids, you know, when they get really bad grazes. They're just little, but they're sterile. They're non-stick. So they're comfortable. And I've got a whole pack of them. Because I go through that sort of thing a lot. Then I've also got... So for cleaning wounds, I've shown you the, the iodine wipes. I also have... Um, sterile saline sachets um, and then also over here I've got more saline um, I've got um, so, uh, chlorhexidine um, which is what I would put in if I was doing a more major dressing and I've got a few dressing packs basic sterile dressing packs really handy to have and seriously, guys, they're cheap as chips. So there for that. Um, so for cleaning wounds, I've also got sterile uh, cotton balls. These are really good in particular for just um, when, you know, little babies have conjunctivitis, that sort of thing. That and some saline and you're good to go. Um, and then also I've got 7.5 by 7.5 centimetre. Um, gore swabs and then I've only got a couple of the ten, uh, 10 by 10 centimeters I had ordered more but they were out of stock and I've got a couple more pairs of sterile gloves no point in doing anything sterile guys unless you've got a sterile field and your hands are sterile okay um, then I've got a whole heap of combine dressings different sizes What's this? this is a huge one I've got a couple of sterile, just serviette type things, what do you call them? Hand wipes, <laughs> then some dressing. So I've got finger dressing, and I've got, um, these are just different non-stick, different size non-stick dressings. It's quite a big one that I folded over at the back there. I've got more saline, you know, that's really good as an eye flush, those smaller ampules. Uh, what's that? Cotton tip applicators. There are cotton tip applicators. Again, might come in handy. Or oh, butterfly closures. And I've also got somewhere here. Uh, yeah, Steri strips. I've got a few packets of Steri strips. I have just some band aids and fingertip and knuckle band aids as well. And as well as some nice gel heel uh, blister band-aids and then I've also got what's that that's like a big a big band-aid basically it's got the it's like a huge band-aid and then I've got like um, like tegaderm sort of stuff it's just a film dressing different sizes and last but not least I've got a little burns pack it's not extensive by any means I've got at the back there a uh, burn dressing, 10 by 10 centimetres. Then I've got some of these other burn dressings. And then I've got some, some burn gel, a few sachets of that. Um, nothing extensive. You know, the best, absolute best thing you can do for a burn is keep it under running cold water. Um, so that would be while you're getting someone um, to actual medical care. And I like seeing what people have in their first aid kits and stuff. Um, so that's what I've got in mine. Um, and yeah, it's I still have a few things I'd like to get for it. There's with the sterile stuff. Some st sterile stuff doesn't even have a use by date on it. Other stuff does. I would use it a little bit past its use by date. After that, I just put it into the non-sterile tub, and I could use it. Um, for other things and replace it but even when they have a use by date on it it's generally at least two years and this stuff is honestly not overly expensive so if I'm having to you know half the stuff I'm having to switch out every two years and I haven't used it it's not a huge expense over two years so so that's what I've got and obviously 
The other thing that I will show you in a separate video it is a, a birth pack. I I'm just missing one item from my birth kit at the moment. <laughs> when that comes into stock, they'll send it to me and then I'll show you what I've got as an emergency birth kit. And that's basically to have in my car if you're out on the road or if you're if you're camping and you know, you just you know, most people are not going to do that, but if I've got the skills, I may as well have the emergency kit, right? <laughs> okay, thank you so much for watching, guys leave a comment below subscribe if you haven't already um, and I've got some other um, videos in the same sort of context but not necessarily medical related but more sort of preparation stuff including I recently did a video on sort of a 12 hour bug out kit for my entire big family um, and I'm currently upgrading that to a 72 hour kit so I will do a video on that when it's completed um, as usual I keep uploading cooking vlogs whatever you want to call them um, and I'm going to continue doing uh, baby number nine updates um, along with just all the other regular things that I tend to upload as a mother of almost nine all right guys thanks so much for watching take care bye bye